W5. The search for perfect vision. Expensive glasses, done with you. Led them to an innovative procedure, but some never saw this coming. Like someone is stabbing my eye. Avis Favreau with an exclusive W5 investigation into LASIK eye surgery. How bad did it get? I couldn't do anything. A rare but devastating side effect. These patients suffer enormously. The blurred lines between diagnosis and symptoms. They thought I was crazy. And the fading hope of the victims. Left untreated, it's worse than being dead. And legalization presents new opportunities. Okay, now we have some money to invest. But some have their doubts. Other young people get into trouble with it. Peter Ackman looks at the world of indigenous cannabis. This will be where you get your pot. Absolutely. And how a traditional plant and modern marketing. No other First Nation is going to take that leap of faith. Could benefit them all. Why not get into it? And out of the game and into the business. These are pretty much ready to go here. Looking for a better way to treat their pain. It took its toll, there's no question. Rick Westhead investigates the big stars and bigger plans. A 10,000 square foot dispensary. That could all go up in smoke. The sports leagues that aren't ready for it. Here is Kevin Newman. Hello and thanks for joining us. For the vast majority of people, it's a procedure that delivers what it promises, much better eyesight. Last year, 83,000 Canadians chose laser eye surgery to correct their vision. But our understanding of the risks is still evolving, and that's something clinics don't always immediately disclose. So CTV's medical specialist, Avis Favreau, investigates the latest research on eye surgery and what happens when it goes wrong. The quest for perfect vision without glasses or contact lenses drives millions each year to undergo laser eye surgery. One of the most common is called LASIK. Upgraded eyesight in minutes. With happy testimonials posted online. Contact solution, bye-bye. Ridiculously expensive glasses, not anymore. I can see the 2020 line perfect. So it went from horrible to I could see it crystal clear. Just looking straight ahead, cornea is crystal clear. And among the satisfied customers are eye doctors themselves, like Michael Boykovitis. The Toronto optometrist had the procedure six years ago. This is amazing. I see, I, I see the same as with, with my contacts. It's amazing. Results like these are the reason laser eye surgery is one of the most popular elective procedures in the world, with studies reporting over 96% of patients satisfied with the treatment. But meet three Canadians who also wanted clear vision, but who ended up with a rare form of eye pain so severe they say they wanted to kill themselves. 25-year-old Christopher Ouellette has 20-20 vision after his LASIK treatment in Montreal in 2015, but along with it came a scorching sensation in his eyes that rarely goes away. The pain is, uh, is extreme. It's uh, a burning sensation. I have a feeling of uh, like if someone was putting a knife in my eyes. Christopher says he can no longer focus on a screen for more than a few minutes at a time because of the severe pain. I studied in accounting. Accounting work is always on the computer. I can't do that anymore, so my diploma is like good for the, the trash. There's no end to it, and yeah, I've had definitely suicidal thoughts. Then there's 25-year-old Gwendolyn Prudhomme, who had LASIK surgery in Vancouver in 2016. She now lives in Montreal, and her pain began one year after her treatment. It's some sort of shooting, striking, uh, striking pain uh, in, in the eye, like uh, someone is, is, is stabbing my eye. Yet doctors told her her eyes looked normal. I've seen over 20 ophthalmologists and they couldn't explain why I was in so much pain because my, my eyes looked fine. Uh, so yes, I got, I got really depressed and suicidal at one, one point, yes. And there's 40-year-old Hussein Jenkins. 
Instead of ditching his glasses post-laser treatment in Vancouver, he now needs several pairs to help him focus at different distances. And the glasses don't help with the chronic pain that radiates from his eyes into his head. It's constant, right? It doesn't stop. It doesn't end. It's every day. From the time I wake up and open my eyes, all day, every day, right, with everything. It affects everything. It felt like a head injury. It felt like shrapnel. Yeah, yeah, like that. Like, that's how I deal with it, is, is I, I treat it like a head injury. Um. <sighs> Excuse me, sorry. And like the others, he has had moments of despair. You do contemplate, you know, is, is life worth living like this, right? Do you want to live like this? Um, and it does cross your mind that it's not worth living anymore. Talk of suicide post-laser eye surgery isn't just a threat. 27-year-old Max Cronin had LASIK twice, once before heading off with the U.S. military in Iraq, the second, an enhancement that was done before returning to school in Texas to become an engineer. His mother, Nancy Burleson, is a physician. She says that second treatment triggered blinding pain. He was in constant severe pain. He described it as needles sticking into his eyes continuously. So what did the doctors tell him? Well, they said, it will go away. Stick with it, it will go away. But it never lifted, and like the three Canadians you met earlier, without a diagnosis or a treatment, he too became desperate. So he had constant pain, legally blind. He had lost his ability to get himself educated. He could not get a job. He could not drive. He was financially devastated. The day after his 27th birthday, my son, felt hopeless. He had had all his dreams robbed from him. And he went into um, a state park in Texas, and he put a gun in his mouth and pulled the trigger. There are many other LASIK complication stories online. Some of those with eye pain are diagnosed with dry eye syndrome, a common side effect that's supposed to clear up within months of surgery. But patients in Canada, the U.S., and around the world say it doesn't explain their intense suffering, despite supposedly having now normal eyesight. The mystery of what's happening to these post-eye laser surgery patients is being studied here at Tuft Medical Center in Boston, where scientists have been taking a much closer look at these so-called normal eyes and have found something that surprises them. You started to look closer at the eye. What did you start finding? There I started to see that these patients have either, most of the times, nerve abnormalities, and to some level also increased inflammation in their tissue as well. Dr. Pedram Hamra is an ophthalmologist and cornea specialist. He treats patients with eye pain caused by disease, by injury, and by surgery. And about 20% of his eye surgery patients are post-LASIK. And to better understand what happens, here's how the surgery works. Doctors use a laser to cut a flap in the cornea, the clear dome, which is dense with nerves and which covers the eye. The surgeon then uses a second laser to reshape the corneal tissue and correct vision problems like near and far sightedness. The flap is then laid back in place so the eye can heal. In those with chronic pain, that cornea appears perfectly fine under standard eye tests. Yet it looks very different under a special high-powered research microscope. We've heard from a number of people who have gone to doctor after doctor who told them, there's nothing wrong with your eye. Your eye looks perfectly normal. What we're using as a slit lamp microscope is over, over a century old. And so the disconnect is now that when we look uh, and be trained to diagnose something that we see, we don't see it because A, the corneas look normal or they look just mildly dry. B, we cannot see the nerve abnormalities. And C, the vision of these patients is typically 20-20.
So there's nothing that you can put your um, hands on, you can put your finger on. Under close scrutiny, Hamra and other researchers are finding nerves that are cut or injured. Those eyes are not normal. No. Microscopically, they're not, but they look normal on exam. This is a normal eye. The feathery white lines are healthy nerves. In this post-LASIK pain patient, they're virtually gone. So what does that mean has happened? Well, because, because you're cutting into the tissue, you've amputated the nerves. And usually in a normal patient, they'll regenerate, but in his case, they didn't. In other words, these amputated nerves try to regrow, but some end up deformed. These are nerves that you have, and you have nerves that come and they stop, right? And these are nerves that can't regenerate properly. And initially they form like a small ball, but some of them will form these bigger balls. It's a syndrome now called corneal neuralgia, pain triggered by damage to the nerves in the eye. So when we started looking at these patients who have eye pain, neuropathic pain, corneal neuralgia, we found that every single patient who has this also shows these nerve abnormalities. And it's helping doctors diagnose patients like Paul Siegel, who had LASIK in 2004. They don't tell you that this could possibly happen, and I know that the odds against it are very high, but um, if left untreated, it's worse than being dead. Literally, you're blind and you're at the peak of pain. He says it was a relief to finally have a name for a condition other doctors had said was in his head. I think a lot of doctors don't really realize that this happens. And again, you know, they gave me a long list of warnings when I had my LASIK, and uh, this was not one of them. Here in Brandon, Manitoba, is Dr. Guillermo Rocha, an ophthalmologist who's performed thousands of laser eye procedures, and he doesn't want people to lose sight of the benefits. LASIK has stood the test of time since 1991. Globally, there are over 63 million procedures that have been done with a 99% success rate and with implications for job, for the military, for first responders, and even for people like you and me who just want to be more independent from glasses. So the procedure itself works. However, as with any surgical procedure, there are risks and there are benefits. As the former president of the Canadian Ophthalmological Society, he says cases of corneal neuralgia are very infrequent. It is an extremely rare complication. It exists, it's real. Um, at this point, there's not a full understanding. And the reason is that it really has taken a lot of years for us to appreciate that it, that it existed. It really, in many of the FDA trials, it was never mentioned. Um, a general incidence could be considered about one in 10,000 cases, which is extremely low. But patients think it's far more common, and Dr. Hamra says research is imperative. Do you have any idea what percentage end up with this type of corneal pain? In terms of what percentage, we don't have any data whatsoever because there was not a single study done to look. The problem was we weren't able to identify the disease. Without having anything to diagnose the patients, we can't even get numbers of how frequent it is. Painful symptoms left misdiagnosed. And I was told that it was all in my head. Leave some patients confused and suffering. Pump is always delivering the medicine when W5 continues. Among the more than 63 million people around the world who've had their eyes reshaped with laser surgery is a small but increasingly vocal group of patients who say they are the faces of a rare but life-altering complication. Gwendolyn Prudhomme, who suffers constant pain post-LASIK, Christopher Ouellette, who's often in agony, Hussein Jenkins, who had laser vision surgery but often lives with blinding headaches. And then there is Katie Enders. 13 years ago, she had laser surgery in Cleveland on a whim to correct her vision. She says it ruined her life. How bad did it get? It was, it was horrible. I mean, I, like, it was disabling pain that made me want to end my life because I couldn't do anything. 
because of it. I mean, it, it, it affected every single thing. I mean, from the second I woke up till I went to bed. So how many doctors did you go to to say, I have pain? Probably about 20, I would say. Like, they said my eyes look perfectly normal. Um, that, you know, basically I interpreted as they thought I was crazy or making it up. She was diagnosed with corneal neuralgia in Boston, where eye specialist Pedram Hamra wants more research into the causes and treatments. Why do you feel the urgency that something needs to be done? Well, because these patients suffer enormously. Um, they lose their jobs, family, they become suicidal. Four years after his LASIK procedures, Hussein tries to cope using an eye patch to help his eyes focus and to ease the pain. I had no idea that something like this was possible from, from LASIK. The consent form he signed before his procedures lists a variety of complications, but no mention of corneal neuralgia or its severity. I'm angry that people have to deal with this and then nobody's held to account for it. And you're, you're told to get on with it and that your vision is fine. Christopher Ouellette says his consent listed potential pain, but in person, he says the LASIK clinic staff downplayed the risks. They didn't talk about anything like I'm having right now. They have advertising and publicity saying that uh, LASIK is extremely safe and it's, uh, if complications happen, they are minor and treatable, which is extremely false. My complication is nothing. It's not, my, it's not minor. It's extremely big. Gwendolyn Prudhomme received a consent form that also mentioned a risk of pain that could be permanent, Yet when the severe eye pain began a year after treatment, she felt dismissed. At one point when I didn't have uh, well, much help from the clinic themselves and uh, we did not understand what was going on, uh, I, I was in terrible pain and I was told that it was all in my head. Dr. Guillermo Rocha is an ophthalmologist who performs LASIK eye surgery he says doctors may need to do more to inform patients. So corneal neuralgia, it is an extremely rare condition um, within an extremely successful procedure such as LASIK, but because it can happen, I think it's beneficial for both sides to have it in a consent form. And if someone does develop signs of corneal neuralgia, they should get specialized help. So at this point, we know that the condition exists but we are not as aware as we should be um, in terms of how to manage these patients. So I think, for example, if a patient presents with corneal neuralgia, now we know, yes, it's a rare condition, it's real, the patient is suffering, let's get them referred to a pain management clinic. But ask the patients in our story, and they say they found few doctors who even knew what was wrong and were left to search for themselves for solutions. Some, like Christopher, use special eye drops. They're in his fridge because they're made from his own blood. It's called autologous blood serum. Growth factors are filtered from the blood, and studies suggest it can help spur nerve growth in the eyes. But Christopher says the remedy has had limited success so far. That's the, one of the best treatments uh, we actually have for this, but it's not healing, it's not like curing my disease, it's treating the symptoms, it's treating the dryness, but it's not like a miracle. Gwendolyn has spent over $2,400 for special contact lenses made from a human placenta, a sort of corneal band-aid to protect her now sensitive eye surface. At the extreme end is Katie. I feel some pain like right before I go to bed. Every treatment to stop her pain failed. Suicidal, she ended up here at the University Hospital's Ahuja Medical Center in Ohio, where Dr. Salim Hayek offered a complex solution, never attempted before, for corneal pain, a permanent pain control pump implanted in her body. So the, the catheter enters uh, in the back where there's a small incision and travels up all the way to the top of the spinal cord to another incision in the front where there is a uh, pump implanted through a small incision in there. Inside that pump is the powerful painkiller fentanyl. 
and tiny doses travel up into her skull to dull the pain in her eyes. A very drastic solution for corneal neuralgia. Pump uh, is always delivering the medicine constantly. When we first turned the pump on, I could feel immediately that it was helping. It was like a dream come true. I, I mean, I couldn't believe it. There's medicine going to my brain and helping my eyes, and, and I knew right away that it was helping. I do have pain still. I deal, you know, I deal with it every day, but everybody deals with little things every day that, you know, and they can still live a life, and that's what I can do now. I can live a life. It's a world first. A world first. Correct for this application. Now other desperate patients are calling Dr. Hayek for help. Because we published a medical case report that we get them from all over the world for patients with similar complaints. In the U.S., the Food and Drug Administration says it is in the process of developing recommendations to industry about how to clearly communicate risks of LASIK to patients. In the meantime, Dr. Hamra and others are doing research into better treatments for chronic eye pain and trying to get more physicians to recognize patients quickly before the pain becomes chronic and hard to treat. Yes, we can treat this problem. Because the sooner we see these patients, the faster they get better. And he's trying to understand which patients are at risk of these complications before they undergo eye surgery. I'm confident that we can find what risk factors these patients have and either exclude them from LASIK or potentially pre-treat them for LASIK or any other surgeries as well. But there's an urgency in do, to doing something at this point. A reason why Gwendolyn, Hussein, and Christopher are telling their stories. What I want to happen is just I don't want my story to repeat itself. I don't want someone else to go through what I've been through because I know how painful it is and it just messes up your life. Well, laser eye surgery only arrived in Canada in the 1990s, and today it's mostly young adults between the ages of 18 to 35 who have it, most of them successfully. Here's what's straight ahead. Big plans for the future. Instead of being a rung on your ladder, how do we become an owner of the whole corporate ladder? And a place in the emerging market. We're gonna be part of that economy on a global scale. When W5 continues.